Wolfrano, who's, who, whose table is B13? Kid, kid, who? Did they get their food yet? Hi, I'm Neil Kleinberg, chef and co-owner of Clinton Street Baking Company and Restaurant in New York City. If you're looking at a real breakfast rush inside the restaurant on a Tuesday morning in June, which is as insane as any other busy morning. We'll get like pops of 50 people at a time with a line out the door and you can easily serve 500 guests just for breakfast, not including takeout and delivery. I'm going to show you how my kitchen keeps up with the rush every single day. So let me tell you a little bit about each spot and then show you how some dishes move through that. Let me tell you about the line kitchen. Basically, it's like a classic old French line kitchen where each person is responsible for composing part of a dish. And then it moves down a line. This is our pancake griddle. The pancake griddle is like the foundation of our restaurant because of how many orders of pancakes we sell. We probably make between two to 300 orders a day, probably 1,500 to 2,000 orders a week. Blueberry pancakes are the top seller by far. We've taken a lot of time to buy the best possible equipment with a very thick steel grill plate, and that helps with the heat recovery. So even when it's loaded with the pancakes, it maintains a constant temperature. That allows us to do very high volume, and they can all be consistent across the board. The griddle is also used for French toast, made from our house-made brioche, and biscuits for some of our biscuit sandwiches. Right next to that is the deep fryer and the grill station. One of our best sellers over the years has been our fried chicken and waffles. And we can't do fried chicken without the deep fryer. So we marinate the chicken for a day or two in buttermilk base with lots of great seasonings and spices like onion powder, garlic powder, cracked black pepper, a little bit of cayenne. And then we dredge it in a mix of cornmeal and all-purpose flour before dropping it in the fryer. That's the key to giving the chicken the really great crispiness. We'd never be able to do big batches like this or get the level of crispiness without fully immersing the chicken in oil with a deep fryer. So next to the fryers, we have a charcoal grill with our briquettes on the bottom. This gives a nice char-grilled flavor to things like burgers, grilled chicken sandwich. We're grilling off some ham right now for the Eggs Benedict and for some of our omelets. And then we also use part of the grill for keeping a bain-marie for keeping some of our sauces and condiments hot. The bain-marie is basically a hot water bath, another French term, so the sauces don't burn, and it's in a central location for all sorts of different dishes. That grill is really hot. I mean, I would say 450 to 500 degrees, and it melted the camera. It wasn't my idea to put a camera above a 500 degree grill. This area is our waffle station. If you look at the kitchen and the way it's set up across the waffle station is the fry station. So it makes sense that the waffles are made on one side, the fried chicken on the other. And when it comes to putting out a final dish of fried chicken and waffles, they work hand in hand. So when you're doing the fried chicken and waffles, you have a bain-marie of waffle batter. You have your waffle iron grills across. You have your fried chicken and batches cooked, and then you're making waffles all day long. I think what makes our waffles great is they have the addition of some of our sourdough starter in it, as well as a little bit of cornmeal in the waffle batter for crunch. The sourdough starter is what gives it a little bit of stretchiness. It, it crisps up the waffle really nice, and you get that little something where someone says, wow, these waffles are really good. Moving down the line, we have our mise en place station or our cold station. This has fixings for omelets, cheeses, veggies. We only use whole fresh eggs. All of our finishing touches and other ingredients for assembly go here as well. At this point, I just want to mention how we have a massive delivery and takeout operation, with basically another satellite kitchen right next to our main kitchen. We have a separate griddle. We have a six burner range with all of our to-go containers at our fingertips with all of our mise en place separate from the kitchen line. So we basically have two separate kitchen crews working in tandem, working together. There's a crossover here, so when it's less busy, I might have one person doing all the eggs for to-go orders and delivery, and I have another person doing, you know, Benedict's or omelets for the restaurant. Since the pandemic, our delivery volume has just enormously increased. I see people on Houston Street on a bench eating our pancakes in a to-go container. So back in our main kitchen, we have a full range with a lot more burners. Carlos Serrala, one of our chefs who's been with us 
20 years. I started in the kitchen. Carlos was my right-hand man. He was washing dishes and peeling shrimp and cracking eggs. He's at the egg poaching station. I like poaching eggs to order rather than part cooking them because it's just night and day. The difference of a poached egg perfectly poached coming out and then being put on a potato pancake or put on a slice of grilled ham, there's no substitute for that. At the end of the kitchen is an area we call the pass or the expo station or the finishing station. It's the end of the line. It's where the food is garnished and put out as well as where we coordinate all the tickets. So the expo's job is to coordinate certain dishes to go to certain tables. And this is one of my favorite parts of the line is when actually the food is just about to go out. This is the area where tickets come in, tickets go out, tickets are going in multiple areas of the restaurant. One is going to the bar for drinks and things like that. Who, who, whose table is B13? Kid, kid, who? Did they get their food yet? But at the pass, we use tickets to assemble an entire order for a table and add the finishing touches at the very end. Carlos, what's this, what's this chocolate here? I'm asking Carlos about that chocolate chunk pancake because it's sitting here and I don't see it on one of these tickets. So it's either an extra one, it's a mistake, or I'm wondering where it is. It may be missing for a delivery order that was already packed up. It's my job or the expediter's job to track every single dish ordered just to keep the flow moving and not panic. There's also a shelf and under that shelf is a heat lamp. That's just to keep the hot food hot coming through the pass, ideally no more than a minute or two. So how does this actually play out when an order comes in? Let's track some of the dishes that we make and watch them move through the kitchen. Let's start with the blueberry pancakes. Again, our most popular item. Every order is three pancakes, so I'll ask the expediter, how many total blues do you have on order? Here they said three, so I'm adding a total of nine pancakes, which is three per order. We're going left to right because I'm a lefty. One of the great things about cooks, chefs, expediters, people, is that the cook is always asking the expediter, how many do I have on the board? And it gives them, in the back of their mind, knowing, okay, I have three orders of pancakes, I got nine on the griddle, I'm gonna put three more extra because I know another order is coming in. You'll see batter being poured on the griddle again and again and again throughout the whole day. It just never stops. With the blueberry pancakes, if you add the blueberries to the batter too early, it makes them spread a little bit. If you add the blueberries too late, the batter is cooked too much, the pancake becomes a little tough, and then the blueberries won't get a chance to commingle with the batter. If you add them exactly at the right time, they'll sink into the batter a little, and then when you're ready to flip them, they'll be immersed in the batter, almost like a cake, and the other side won't burn, and they won't scald, and they'll really be perfect. You want whatever's in the pancake to be dispersed evenly, and you want it to gain as much flavor in the batter as possible. Carlos, I got two blue ready. You okay, need? Yes. For here? Yes. Okay, the pancake is cooked. I take them off the griddle. I ladle two ounces of our blueberry sauce on the top. That blueberry sauce, it's made in house. It's our blueberries with a touch of sugar, lemon zest, then a little bit of vanilla. And that is the paste de resistance. The pancake gets passed off to the expediter and the expediter then pours the warm maple butter in a ramekin and then right before they're going out, a little dust of powdered sugar. The maple butter is our signature maple syrup for our pancakes, our French toast, our biscuits, and it's pure maple syrup from New York State whisked in with whole unsalted butter, kind of like the French technique of a beurre blanc. For one gallon of maple syrup, we use 36 pounds of butter. The cult-like following is unbelievable from the maple butter. When we first started Clinton Street, we had a little sign-in book at the front desk, and some person said, I want to rub this maple butter all over my partner's body. And then we took the book away. Okay, so the ticket is checked. We make sure the order is right. We ring the bell, and it, out it goes. Our servers, runners, waiters, managers take orders to the dining room, or our bartender can reach around the corner to serve customers sitting at the counter. Caleb, pick up for the bar. Southern and a Betty. Next, I'll show you how the French toast gets made. As I mentioned, we also use our griddle for the French toast. So here it starts with two slices of our house-made brioche. A quick side note on the bread. 
We're called Clinton Street Baking Company and Restaurant for a reason, because in addition to everything you see here, we're also a full-on bakery. We bake our own bread, we do our own brioche, we make our own sourdough in-house, our seven grain, our biscuits, our scones, our muffins, our cookies, our cakes, our pies, everything's made from scratch. We have some amazing talented bakers downstairs doing cakes and cookies and key lime pie. We actually started 20 years ago as a bakery, and now we still have that full component of the bakery in our back pocket. We even have a takeout window just for the bakery. Okay, back to the French toast. So our house-made brioche gets thickly sliced. It gets dipped into our amazing batter. Right behind that, it's browned on the griddle with a little bit of whole butter. Next to the griddle, we keep our caramelized bananas. It's our version of Bananas Foster, which is like brown sugar, a little bit of butter, caramelized bananas, a touch of cinnamon, and it's like a nod to New Orleans. Next, it's taken over to the cold station where it gets organic Texas pecans on the top, then down the line to the expo where it gets maple butter and a little bit of cinnamon sugar over the top. It's a really a crowd favorite. Next, I'm gonna take you through the omelets. The omelets require a little more attention because you can't just leave them alone or scramble them up or whatever or just throw the eggs on a griddle. They're made in a pan. So I'm working on one of the ranges here and behind me I have all the toppings when I'm making an omelet. And that's the whole thing about mise en place is that you have to have things at your fingertips. So I'm dropping in spinach in the middle. As you can see the eggs aren't fully cooked yet so that gives the filling a chance to heat up while the eggs finish cooking. And then I'm taking the omelet and I'm putting it underneath the salamander above me so that it warms the ingredients in the middle and melts the cheese a little if there's cheese in the omelet. And you kind of pull it all together and then just gently get them to the right temperature. Then I'm folding the omelet right onto the plate and plating it is super important to me. I'm a little neurotic about it, wiping down the plate and rearranging everything to look its best. Even the toast has to be perfect, so if I get a side of toast or I get toast with my eggs. I want the toast to be, look like toast. I don't want it to be blonde. Tell Alex just to toast the seven grain a little more. If it doesn't look toasted, put it in again. Sometimes it takes a little while. You got a salmon benedict and a blue for bar one. Just came in. With all of this going on, it's really easy to make a mistake or to miss an order, which is what's happening right here, right now. I don't have it. You, didn't print? you want it on the fly? Yeah, like salmon and Benedict and, and a what? Blue, and a blue. So on the fly means like right away, prioritizing the customer's order because we mess something up like as fast as humanly possible. If that means taking an order of pancakes from the next order that's coming out and then getting another order on the grill, that's on the fly. Hey, look. Buy them a biscuit loaded from me. Right. It's coming right out. So buy them a biscuit means I'm going to send this customer this loaded biscuit right away to smooth things over for the long wait. And I want everyone to be happy here. I want to overcompensate for the customer so they don't feel like they got shafted. The dish we're doing here is our latke benedict. Didi, my business partner and wife, inspired me to do a potato pancake dish since we're famous for our pancakes, so why not a potato pancake? So instead of the English muffin as the base for the benedict, we have two potato latkes, or potato pancakes. The latkes are made earlier on the griddle, but get crisped here in the fryer to order. They expedited over the chef on the line doing the cold stuff who received those and then top them with house-cured smoked salmon. We are actually curing and smoking salmon downstairs a few times a week. We smoke it, we season it, we slice it, paper thin, and it's really, really good stuff. After that, poached eggs are put on top and we finish with our hollandaise. Hollandaise is like one of the mother sauces. It's an egg sauce made with butter, egg yolks, lemon juice, a little bit of cayenne pepper. So to finish this dish, we use a little trout roe caviar, which is really great. It has a little nuttiness to it, and they kind of pop in your mouth. And then the chives, and that simple garnish that really pulls the whole dish together. Potatoes, eggs, smoked salmon, and caviar. It's very luxurious, yet it's kind of light. So you have room for dessert. I'd say the hardest part about keeping the kitchen moving is having the right people in the right place and having all of the ingredients that go behind every dish prepared thoughtfully, meticulously, and consistently. It's kind of like a symphony. When you see an orchestra, you hear an orchestra, and you hear 
like something being done. All of a sudden, after the whole thing is composed, you'll hear this beautiful piece of music. And I look at the kitchen like that. As a customer, you'll feel you had an amazing experience. You'll only see the finished product and you won't know anything that's going on in the back. 